Hello and welcome to our SMBP recent research recap. My name is Deb Delabru. I'm a consultant working with the Minnesota Department of Health and I'm joined today by Reed Haza um, with Stratus Health. And Reed, do you want to just introduce yourself quickly and mention what you've been working on with the project? Sure. Yeah, this is Reed Haza. I'm a senior healthcare IT consultant with Stratus Health. And Stratus Health is a quality improvement organization celebrating its 50th anniversary this year. And I've been working with uh, a number of clinics uh, in cooperation with the Minnesota Department of Health on SMBP programs and getting those implemented and in place and up and running for them. Wonderful. So today on the research recap, we're going to be talking about a few um, different topics. Our goal is to really help our um, clinic partners and our public health partners stay up on the latest science and things coming out in the literature that support the SMBP teamwork going on um, at our partner sites through the MDH and CDC 1817 and 1815 grants. So we'll be talking about a couple of different things today. Um, the first one is some new emerging research um, policy statements around support for the evidence-based practices and improving excellence in teams that are working on um, self-monitored or self-measured blood pressure with patients. The second thing that we'll talk a little bit about is some new um, promising practices and resources and tools to engage teams. Uh, in clinics and to engage patients in self-measured blood pressure monitoring. And then we'll close our segment today by touching on some new, terrific, most updated resources um, for clinic teams uh, to assist with billing and payment for improved um, self-monitored blood pressure. Um, care. So, and really our goal is to help everyone stay informed on the latest emerging science and the newest uh, literature that's coming out supporting SMBP in practice. Great. Well, I'll talk a little bit about the evidence-based practice uh, highlights here. There are certainly more to it than just what you see on the screen here, but let's kind of tick through uh, the six points that we have here. So first of all, um, we know that doing SMBP helps confirm the correct diagnosis. We know that when patients are in the clinic, sometimes we have that white coat syndrome, the readings are going to be off. Um, there could be, uh, you know, uh, other issues going on, which lead to an incorrect reading. We often know that there are second blood pressure checks done in the clinic, but having SMBP done in the home enables the uh, provider to do a compare and contrast. What readings are we seeing um, knowing that we're using these certified devices and have confidence in the reading. And I'll say some other things about that, but we have the ability to look at readings from different settings, the home setting and in clinic settings. So that's great. And then um, easy to validate device accuracy. So we know that out of the box, these devices are working well, but we can also, again, do that compare and contrast when the device is given to the patient. You can actually um, do it with them there in the clinic and compare the reading that they're getting with um, what the, the clinic device is showing so that we know when we start the program and the patient has the device in their hands that they have confidence that the readings they're getting are indeed accurate when they do that at home themselves. And then the third point here, combining SMBP and telehealth counseling does indeed lead to success. So it's very interesting to combine these different modalities. We know that traditionally people can go in their home and take these readings and then either phone the readings in or when they're in the clinic, um, you know, provide those readings and there's different ways to get that information to them. But when we combine that with telehealth, we often know the conversation isn't solely about SMBP, it certainly can be, but oftentimes it's more holistic conversation and you're integrating SMBP, getting those readings, talking about other things that are going on with their health. So it's a good way to combine efforts there and make a, a single visit um, more efficacious about a, a variety of things that are going on with their health. And the fourth item there, cost effective and convenient. Um, we know that the actual price on these devices has come down. down. We'll talk a little bit about billing and, and the affordability of them. But um, you know, for, for well under $100, often around 50 or even less than that, we can get a device into somebody's hands. Um, you know, they're portable. They can um, you know, use them wherever they need to in the home setting, could even be used at work or et cetera. So that's... Um, a good, a good item to note of when you're doing the program. 
And then teamwork as patient support. We know that we all want to practice at the top of our license. So the SMBP program, <clears throat> in essence, is kind of a, a divide and conquer. So we may have that encounter with our provider and we're getting our readings in clinic with them. And they're basically prescribing the use of an SMBP device. Um, but then there can be another role in the clinic, could be an MA, could be a CHW, that does a little counseling with the patient and gets them set up, does the education, maybe even does that test reading with them in the clinic, and then works with them over time. So, you know, the CHW again, or uh, an MA could be doing that weekly or bi-weekly check-in, and then sharing that information with the provider. Um, there's a different, uh, or I should say a number of different ways that that can work. So lastly, um, new coverage and payment. Um, Deb is gonna say a little bit about that, but because there's a lot of advocacy going on around SMBP, we know this works. It's actually kind of triggering some things around patient engagement. People are actively you know, being engaged in their health. And because of that, we know that it has um, better impact. Um, there's some research that's being done around that. And, that's leading to the payers taking a closer look at this and saying, how can we make this um, a regular part of our coverage and including that in you know, billing and coding, et cetera. Yeah, terrific. So one of the really nice uh, resources that we did wanna point our um, clinic and public health partners to is a recent uh, joint policy statement from the American Heart Association and the American Medical Association. Um, they put together a number of um, really important you know, studies and research findings. Their meta-analyses showed that self-measured blood pressure monitoring is associated with a reduction in blood pressure and improved blood pressure control. Um, and that they're really seeing the greatest benefit when it's, you know, when that self measured blood pressure monitoring is done along with the different you know, teamwork and care team services that might be offered to support a patient. So um, if you're interested in more information on that study, here is the journal um, posting from circulation. It's a really nice layout. If you click on the PDF format, you can easily scroll through and maybe touch on just the areas that would be you know, most relevant to your practice, whether you have questions about, you know, technique, device accuracy, you know, effectiveness or cost efficacy. Um, they also have a really nice um, sort of summary down here on um, the cost effectiveness data that's coming out. So um, that may be helpful in practice. So we encourage you to check out that um, that link here um, in the slide um, to find that research article. So um, we touched on a couple of interesting points and we did wanna highlight a few new resources um, coming out from you know, emerging promising practices and, and data in the field. Um, the first great resource we wanted to highlight for you um, is this new US blood pressure validated device testing website. It is managed by an independent third party organization um, that is led by experts in hypertension. Um, and they actually have done um, independent validation of blood pressure monitor devices. Um, it's really, the website makes it easy to quickly validate whether the device you've chosen um, for a patient is going to um, be accurate for you. Um, and the benefits of this, you know, using this sort of resource or tool is that you know, the patient can feel safe, um, at, that they've got a reliable um, device and you know that they're with that great education that's happening in the clinic and with follow-up um, that they feel you know kind of able to use it that it's going to be trustworthy and then also that you know cl clinicians can know and rely on this um, really well done independent third-party validation that the data that you're getting from home monitoring from patients is trustworthy um, and that you can you know feel confident in using it in your clinical decision making. So it's also helpful to note, and I'll show you that um, website here in a moment, but it's also helpful to note that um, you know, using some of these resources can be really beneficial, especially if you're in a clinic or public health environment where you may have um, new physicians who are not as familiar with the benefits of SMBP, or you may have new leadership. Um, 
it also can be really helpful to access some of these resources to maintain your SMBP program, especially if you have new members of the team or if you do have some you know, clinical staff turnover. Um, it, these resources can be really effective. And I think one of the nice things um, from the American Medical Association, they had a recent blog post in about the last six months um, that talked with different clinical experts about why self-measured blood pressure matters. And you know, really they're seeing across the board that, um, it, you know, when self-measured blood pressure monitoring is used as a partnership with the patient, um, that, you know, it's really, as Reed was referencing, it's really successful, it's helpful in engaging the patients in their own care and building that trust between clinician and patient. Um, it's really assisting the patients to understand their own health, um, giving them the support that they need with follow-up phone calls, helping educate them, answer any questions they might have, you know, also helping guide them to manage medications. It's, it's really an overall teamwork um, treatment strategy. And Deb, if I could add to that, one of the other benefits is, uh, as you mentioned there, the patient engagement piece, they kind of de facto by doing this, just get really you know, engaged, looking at those numbers, monitoring. And also it's not done in isolation, it's changes that they're making in diet, health, exercise, et cetera, combined. And they can start to see their numbers change over time and have some sort of quantitative um, view of how their, their health is being impacted by making these other changes. So. It, it all just kind of goes hand in hand. Absolutely. So that um, website that we showed you, the validatebp.org, when you pull up the website, it's a really nice, clear site, easy to use. Again, it's independently, um, an independent review committee validates all of the devices listed. They have this really nice a key up here at the top to indicate which devices would be most appropriate for which settings, which is very helpful. Um, and the first devices, um, the ones near the top of the list here are those that have been validated for home use. Um, so it makes it really easy to scroll through. If you click on any of the devices, you can um, check out their different, you know, kind of benefits, um, the different features that they offer. Um, so they have a really nice comprehensive database. And again, the data, because it's been independently validated and reviewed by experts, it, you know, it's trustworthy information about devices, which is something that um, both American Heart Association and American Medical Association um, have heard, you know, from clinicians as a real need. Um, in their practice to support their SMBP practice. So, and both of those organizations do link to this website on their, um, on, through their own materials supporting SMBP use in practice. So it's a great resource to check out when you have time. Again, the website is validatebp.org. Um, and then finally, as Reed mentioned, we're going to touch a little bit on new resources for billing and payment for SMBP care. You know, one of the most interesting things going through the last year with COVID and the transition to more telehealth resources being available to people um, and covered by insurance is that um, we've seen a, you know, an expansion in the billing and coding availability and in successful payment for these services. So just to highlight a few key updates, um, in the last year. So now the SMBP education can be delivered either by a physician or a clinical team member using telehealth. Um, there's new CPT codes to support that. Um, they've also relaxed some of the federal requirements for device calibration. Um, so it used to be an annual requirement and now it's more of a recommendation, but they do recommend you know, that patients are seen annually in the clinic for follow-up. Um, if possible. And then the other new thing to highlight for clinical teams and public health um, clinics is that telephone follow-up to review blood pressure readings and counsel, educate, you know, make plans with patients. Those are now allowed and billable. Um, and there are CPT codes available for those services as well. And they're seeing, you know, according to the American Medical Association, they're seeing um, a good uh, a response in terms of payment for those services. So um, 
the nice thing about these resources is that they're kept updated by the American Medical Association. So they're really tracking what's happening with new billing and coding regulations, federal programs, you know, all of that sort of stuff. Um, and the information is really easy to find on their website. So they have a new health equity um, initiative aimed at um, self-measured blood pressure monitoring um, and outreach to uh, communities of color and underserved communities called Release the Pressure. Um, and their website is really very easy to navigate, um, would be useful to probably most any member of your clinical team. So we'll just take a look at that Release the Pressure website here. And they have a number of different tools and resources. I really like this area. If you scroll down just a little bit on the page, you'll see the SMBP care team oriented resources. They've got a great clinic quick guide um, that's got all the most up-to-date, you know, promising practices, best practices um, for clinic teams. They also have a really nice device accuracy test um, piece. So if you've got a patient that's got a new device or they're having some issue with a device, you can use their little guide here um, to help figure out what might be going on. Um, there's a really nice, easy to use patient training checklist just to make sure that you aren't missing anything when you are doing that education and follow up with patients, um, especially if you're doing it via telehealth or over the phone. Um, and then the resource that I did want to highlight is related to billing and coding is this SMBP CPT coding PDF. And again, this is the piece that um, American Medical Association is keeping updated. So when you click on that, um, you'll see that they've got a really nice, easy to follow billing and coding sheet. Again, helpful for either clinical staff or you know, finance and billing department staff to use. The new codes, you know, what they can be used for, um, all the different, you know, maybe addendums or things you should know about using the codes. They also have um, helpful information on the remote monitoring. Um, a little bit more detail about that piece and then um, the different parameters and requirements. And again, they are keeping this information updated, so it's really helpful. Um, the other thing I really appreciate about the AMA's updated websites is that they are linking just as the American Heart Association is to that, um, to that website for the validated um, devices. So if you do have a patient that's looking for a device, it's, it's easy to find the information on, on which one would be a reliable one to choose. Um, Reed, anything else to add on that? No, as we wrap up here, um, many excellent points there. There's uh, much more details you can see to dive into. But I think overall, the big takeaway here is that self-measured blood pressure monitoring in the program and what the clinic can do in combination with um, that patient engagement with um, your individual patients and your, your overall population is it's one of the known evidence-supported um, interventions that can be combined with other therapies and other interventions that you're doing to improve your patient's health. Um, lots, lots more to say about it, but thank you, Deb. Yeah, thank you so much, Reed. And we hope that... Um, these little you know, research updates are helpful for you in supporting your practice and all the hard work that you're doing um, with your clinic teams and patients around SMBP. Um, and we'd love to hear you know, feedback. If you do have any additional questions, um, certainly check out the links that were included in the presentation. You can also contact the MDH Office of Statewide Health Improvement Initiatives with, for any further information or questions. Thank you so much. Thank you.